Hello, I'm FTX Toycat, and Minecraft 1.17 can be a confusing update to understand. I mean, after all, they claim there are over 100 new features in this update, and although that's technically correct, it doesn't include some of the features you would expect from the Caves and Cliffs update, and so today I wanted to end that confusion by giving you the six major features that I am excited about and that I think you should care about in today's video. By the way, you can subscribe if you want to see more Minecraft 1.17 content, but let's get straight into it. Because I think knowing about all of the new mobs, all of the new blocks, all of the new achievements, etc. can be exciting to dive into it. I think for a lot of people, they just want to understand how is their Minecraft going to be different. And the first major way it's going to change is what happens when you go below the ground. Because there is obviously a brand new ore added to this update. It's copper. Copper is really exciting by itself because you mine it and you get some copper. Which, by the way, you can get uh, quite a few copper. Um, but the other thing that you can uh, you know, see will change is that iron and gold will also be different when you mine them. Those. Respectively, you'll get a raw gold and a raw iron when you mine both of those blocks, which is really great by itself. But the biggest reason to be excited about this, if you're an endgame player who maybe has a fortune pickaxe, as opposed to one of these lame not fortune pickaxes, but if you have a fortune pickaxe, the thing that you should be excited for is the fact that you'll get much more uh, copper than you otherwise would. You'll get much more gold than you otherwise would, because now you get raw gold in large quantities, which can then be smelted to regular gold. And you'll also get much more raw iron, which means that iron and gold mining have been substantially buffed Basically, there is a brand new ore. Also, there is a iron and gold change, which makes it a lot easier to get iron and gold. And then additionally, they've changed the textures for all of the ores. So when you go underground, although the generation won't be too different, there is a few new cave types, uh, the thing you can expect is to see slightly different textures for all of the ores you find down there. And in my opinion, they're better ones. Also, if you really want, you can craft using these iron and gold uh, you know, things that you find. You can take them and you can make some raw... Uh, copper blocks, you can make some raw iron blocks, or some raw gold blocks, which, again, do have their own little values. You know what? I hate rain. But we're gonna keep on going forwards with this, because did you know the second feature in this update uh, that I think you need to be excited about? Um, it's the dripstone, and it's not for the traditional reason. Dripstone is really great because you can drop it, and if it falls on your head, it'll do some damage. That's exciting. If you fall onto a dripstone on the ground, that'll do some damage too. Also exciting. Also, did you know dripstone looks like a fun block by itself? However, the thing you should be really excited for is lava becomes renewable in this update. And even if you're not a big farming person, this is something to be excited for, because allow me to show you in about 100 times speed, this will set the tick speed to about 200 times what it normally is. What happens if you leave lava above some dripstone blocks with some cauldrons to cap these uh, catch these little drips of lava? As you're going to start to see, I hope fairly soon, uh, as you're going to start to see, they will fill with lava, which means now we can officially turn lava, as you can see, four sources up there, turns into eight sources down here in enough time. Also, if you really want, you can use this as a way to throw away uh, items you don't want anymore. So lava cauldrons, fun enough by themselves, but most importantly, it means that you can now start to collect uh, lava um, in an infinite way. Four lava can become infinite lava, and that's really exciting. It does take some time, so just be prepared for that, but the fact that you can have infinite lava is going to be so useful now, uh, and it means that you don't have to make those continuous trips to your never, something I'm a big fan of. So the third feature you need to care about in this update is copper, because obviously copper can be mined from the ground, and you can make it into copper uh, blocks if you really want to, uh, but the thing that you sorry, raw copper blocks, but I recommend smelting up your copper and making copper itself. So this is a house made from copper. Personally, I think it's a really nice design. Wow, doesn't it look kind of like a, a normal person house? I think it really does. Uh, but you can see how it's, oh, it's slowly starting to age. <laughs> but you can also see, if we go on the inside right here, it's not just the copper and the raw copper and the deep slate copper and the copper block. And there's all of these things. There's also the weathered copper because it starts to turn green. There's copper stairs, copper slabs, copper everything. And they also all slightly weather, really weather, etc. Basically, there are so many new types of blocks that range from deep green that looks like this to ranging to slightly, uh, you know, mostly green that looks like this to ranging to, oh yeah, this is mostly orange, but it's starting to green, to all the way pure orange. And if you like any of these four states, you can obviously wax them, so they'll stay that way forever. Something I really like. Obviously, copper is also useful for making the uh, the, the, the spyglass recipe, so if you want to look at the damage by hand, man, it really is starting to get bad. Oh, because the tick speed's turned up so much, everything's going to start to age faster. Anyway, so uh, yeah, that's an exciting thing you can do with copper in this update. Copper is a game changer when it comes to making pretty metallic things. Unlike the other metal blocks we have in Minecraft, copper looks distinctly metallic, and it's also going to be very easy to mine because of the fortune thing and because of the raw ore thing. So with that said, um, let's move into the fourth thing here. You know what? 
it rains all the time in the UK and it means that it's followed me even when I'm here in the United States. I'm still getting rain <laughs> following me around the place. So with that said, the fourth thing you should be excited about in the Minecraft 1.17 update, it has to be Deep Slate. So Deep Slate will generate differently in this update than it will post 1.18. Be prepared that if you've heard about Deep Slate from YouTube videos, it's probably different to how you expect it. It spawns in big kind of, uh, you know, uh, slabs underground, like big uh, kind of veins underground. It's very strange the way Deep Slate works, but you can find it and you can mine it. And then when you mine it, you can make a whole bunch of different blocks. Seriously, this is, as you can see right here, 17 different types of Deep Slate that we have from the same one block. It's very exciting by itself to hear that. But also, look at this delightful house. This is exactly how a house should be made in Minecraft, but it's made from Deep Slate now. Wow, isn't that delightful? Look at this. This is so nice. Actually, I, I think this is actually a really good job. I like the flooring. I like the walls. I like the ceiling. I think they did a great job with this house. I also think that it's useful for flooring. As you can see, uh, it, <laughs> a great flooring opportunity is that you can use it and use the blocks together to make this great dark flooring uh, that can really do some wonderful things. Also, there's the more stereotypical builds where you can use it to make walls or whatever else. Wow, many variants, many combinations, such fun. Um, I really do think that Deep Slate is a game changer when it comes to making blocks because unlike Blackstone, which is a little bit dull, this has some really nice textures to it. Seriously, look at this tiled Blackstone block right here and tell me you're not in love with uh, Deep Slate as a concept. And if you somehow do tell me that, I won't believe you, it's impossible. But just in case, let's move on to the fifth thing you need to care about, because we're going underground again. Wow, what are we possibly gonna find underground? Because obviously everyone everyone cares about raw iron, everyone cares about you know, the, you know, the beam blocks, if you will, everyone cares about the corn blocks, if you will, everyone cares about deep slaying copper, I hope, after hearing about those things. But the niche one to me is Glow Lichen. Glow Lichen is a new block that will generate underground. It makes caves easier to see, but it also means that you can make your underwater easier to see as well. You can take these blocks if you have, uh, obviously, a silk touch pickaxe, but you can take these blocks uh, with you and you can place them under your ocean. And if you have bone mill on you, you can even bone mill them to make them expand and grow. And basically, if you have enough bone mill, you can make some really pretty things happen. And yeah, I, I think that's delightful. This is the glow lichen block. Also, it's worth mentioning glow lichen and glow item frames and glow signs come from the glow squid. This update makes things slightly easier to see. While also, again, you can see this cave doesn't have a visible light source, but yet it is lit up. Minecraft has had a lighting problem for so long that this update fixes. The glow item frame does that, the glow lichen does that. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's a really exciting thing. But the only thing I'm more excited about, and you can see the genuine joy when I found my first one on a stream uh, <laughs> on a Thursday. Uh, but the thing that uh, you know really uh, got me going are these geodes. This to me is the one true finished, no no BS part of the cave update that you can explore in its entirety when the update comes out. Because did you know, Minecraft 1.17 has Amethyst Geode. So the Amethyst Geode is kind of exciting just to look at. It's exciting just to hear these noises. I mean, seriously, how can you not be in love with that? But even more exciting is the fact that they'll grow crystals. The crystals will only grow here. You have to come to these amethyst geodes. They they won't be able to grow elsewhere. Uh, but these crystals, which are also exciting and look kind of pretty, can be used to craft these amethyst blocks you see around me that make these delightful sounds. So if you want to take this block with you, you can. Or you can use it to make telescopes. Or you can use it to make tinted glass. Tinted glass is one of my favorite recipes about this update. But even better than just being a bunch of recipes and a really nice sounding block, it also comes, of course, with two other blocks that come along it. There is this polished base salt, uh, smart, sorry, smooth base salt, um, which exists like this. I, I, I like smooth base salt and it's a new way to get it in the overworld. And then there is of course this, the calcite blocks, which honestly, I, I'm kind of torn about calcite blocks. Like, I don't know whether they're gonna be one of the most useful blocks or they're gonna be one of those weird forgotten things like diorite or andesite where like you use them, but you're not excited for them. But in either case, three brand new blocks for the price of one, plus the ability to get your spyglass, plus all of that other stuff. I don't know, it seems beyond exciting to me. And so that is the six, six feature you should care about in 1.17. There are six major things that I would say you should have your hypes up for. You should have <laughs> your hypes up, I like that. I, you should have your hype ready for the fortune pickaxe, copper, iron, and gold revolution. You should have your excitement ready for copper, for deep slate, for infinite lava, for glow lichen, for the amethyst geodes, and most importantly, wow, there's a secret seventh one. Let's go into this new house. Wow, look at these blackstone, uh, sorry, these uh, deep slate blocks. Doesn't this look delightful? Um, but yeah, the last thing here I wanted to mention is that we may not have new mountains yet, but we have Savannah Mountains looking over here like they are amplified. And you know what? 
I uh, I think this was beautiful. This was uh, actually a map put together by uh, Adorable Ho. He's one. Of, he's a member of the Toy Cat community that is so talented uh, when it comes to map making stuff. And I, I just asked him to put something together, and he did a really good job of this. So if you liked the way this video was presented, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, send a nice compliment to Adorable Ho 420. That really is his name. He's got a fun name. But uh, yeah, you can <laughs> send compliments via the internet. And otherwise, I would say that this update is full of opportunities. Obviously, it's not as full of opportunities as you might have imagined it would be before. It's not the Caves and Cliffs update in its entirety, it's just part one, but part one does provide some, oh, it's so weird to see this house go from entirely orange to like orange and green. It's kind of ugly now, right? Can we can we all agree it looked better when it was bright orange? But um, yeah, it's uh, obviously not the, the bigger update, but there are still so many things that you can enjoy after 1.17 is out, and I hope this video summarized that nicely. If you think it did, like the video, favorite it, subscribe, do whatever you need to do to uh, say nice things on the internet. But for now, I hope you all enjoyed, because I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.